Okay, so our last set of gas relationships um, are going to look at volume versus amount of gas to start out with. So we want to say as amount of gas increases, volume increases when temperature and pressure are constant. Okay, perfect example of this is blowing up a balloon. I'll see if I can draw a halfway decent macro picture of this. So there's your balloon. You're going to put air in and it's going to get bigger. Okay, so symbolic looking at our graph. Um, amount of gas increases, volume increases, temperature and pressure is going to be constant. Okay. Um, this relationship, hopefully you notice when you graph this, it didn't actually matter um, what your two variables were. Based on the way, or in terms of which one was independent and dependent, because they both increased incrementally as if they were changed on purpose. So the way that this is written, we want moles to be our independent, amount of gas to be independent, so it'll be on the X, volume, which is dependent to be on the Y, this is going to give us a nice linear proportional relationship. Okay, particulate pictures are going to be a little easier here. Okay, I'm going to start out with my volume by the size of my containers. Again, um, we're going to use a reasonable number of particles here. I'm going to go with like three, I think, to start out with. Um, I want to show, let's go like a couple of collisions, um, maybe these two particles, and then that one's just moving. Pressure and temperature stay the same. So even though I'm going to add more particles, let's like, I don't know, let's go from three to six, four, five, six. Okay, pressure is going to stay the same temperature is going to stay the same. So we want to have the same number of collisions. So that one's pretty close. Let's go one collision, two collision to keep our pressure the same. We want to keep our motion the same because our temperature is the same. All right. So we want to track this same speed and number of collisions. more particles um, higher volume okay so remember here as we have more particles we're going to have an increase in the number of collisions between particles so let's put that more particle collisions And that's going to cause them to spread out more. I'm having really a lot of trouble spelling today, aren't I? All right, let's try again. Spread out. Okay, and that's why our volume increases. This is only possible when you have a flexible container, which is what we're going to have in a, like a balloon, for example. Okay, if we take a look at our last gas relationship, this one is actually pretty challenging. I would say probably the most of all of these, and that is amount of gas versus temperature. So the temperature is changed on purpose. The amount of gas is the one that is changing um, as our dependent variable. So here, um, let's say as then the amount of gas Whoops, let's make it simple. As amount of gas increases, temperature will decrease when volume and pressure are constant. Okay. Now remember, volume will be constant in a rigid container 
okay, where the size is not um, able to be changed. Flexible containers are the ones that can change volume. So here we're talking about a, um, a rigid container. Um, there's not a very good macroscopic example that I can give for you with this one, um, but we're gonna get really focus in on our particle level description to really help with this. So, um, symbolic, let's say again, m amount of gas increases, temperature decreases, um, volume and pressure once again are going to be constant. Um, let me set up my graph. Okay, amount of gas, temperature. We're going to do this as our absolute scale, our Kelvin scale. What we want to see here is we're going to see an inverse proportional relationship. So we're going to see this as it is decreasing. It is not happening at a constant rate. We're going to see that curvature. Okay, so particulate. Again, this is where we're really going to focus in. We are going to have equally sized containers to represent equal volume. Again, I'm going to do my very, very best to make these equally sized. Okay. Particle number is going to change. Let's go with a reasonable number of particles. Okay. Four. Pretty nice. Okay. Now, we know that as we add more particles in our second picture, we're going to see the temperature decrease. So I'm going to go from four to six particles, I think. Sounds okay. So I know that these are going to be um, a lower temperature. Therefore, they're moving slower. Okay. Higher temperature, therefore they're faster. Okay, so I'm going to show these first set of particles moving faster by showing two wuxi lines for motion. Okay, I'm going to show half of these particles colliding. So I want two tails on my whammies. Okay, and two of them are just moving. Okay, higher temperature. Now, remember the um, number of collisions needs to stay the same. Okay, so same number of collisions. More particles over here. So in order to keep the pressure the same, these particles have to slow down. Okay, we want to show the same number of collisions to represent the same pressure. Those particles have to slow down. There is no other way to account for the fact that the pressure and volume remain the same when more gas is added, aside from the fact that they are going to have to slow down. Okay, so if you think about this, the particles have to go slower so that we don't have more collisions. If we were to put those particles at the higher speed um, into that same volume of a container, moving at that faster speed, there's going to be way more collisions that take place. And so that pressure on the inside would be greater. That's not what we want here. We want the pressure to be the same. So the particles have to slow down when that is the case. Right? It's like, um, maybe think about it like a bottleneck of traffic, whether you're thinking about it on a roadway or in the hallway. The hallway, for example, is only going to be a certain size. It can't get larger or smaller. Whereas you have more people that are pushed into that same volume of space, they are going to have to move slower in order to make it so that everybody's not running into each other or into the walls. Okay? So these are our six gas relationships. Um, you need to get really, really comfortable and familiar with these as you are going to need to use these to help to quantify these changes as we move into doing calculations with the NTP tables. And that's what we have up next.